disciples knew, drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage of the, on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them. Bring them here to me. And then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to the daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt the full foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went, and they did as Jesus ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks in the road, while others cut branches from the trees, strewed them on the road. The crowds proceeding him and those following kept crying out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee, the gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, so like the crowds who acclaimed Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace and in song. Our procession song is number 402, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. Number 402. Please join us in the procession. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, 
caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection. He who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. This first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah was probably written showing the uh, who the faithful Israelite was. It concentrates in our section for today the suffering of the servant of God, the people Israel, the suffering of the people are personified in this. And when the disciples walked through the passion and death of Jesus Christ and discovered the empty tomb, they heard in these words the prophet not speaking just of the people, but speaking of Jesus Christ. Let's listen to how the disciples heard this reading for the first time after the resurrection. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheek to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is number 29. 29.
our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Listen carefully. One of the things that the newly converted Jewish disciples of Christ recognized uh, from their own upbringing, God was so immense, so huge, so other, so marvelous that you could not even say his name. And Paul says, look what Jesus gave up to be one of us. Let's listen to how Paul puts it. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and, on, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and to put him to death. They said, not during the festival, for fear there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany, reclining at table, in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine, spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has this been wasted? Why has there been this waste? of perfumed oil. It could have been sold for more than 300 days wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you and whenever you wish you can do good to them but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the 12, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased, and they promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? 
Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, <clears throat> One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written from him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread and said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which I will shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should, should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke in a similar way. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful, even to death, remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little, fell to the ground, and prayed that if it were possible the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let's go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to Jesus and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. At this, they laid their hands on him, arrested him, and one of the bystanders drew his sword and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But the scriptures but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. 
Now a young man following, followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body, and they seized him. But he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And that high, at that the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witness? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were the Nazarene with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer courtyard. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, this man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes that is, the whole Sanhedrin held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to them in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him, Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? for he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. 
The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole, whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! And they kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian. He was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine, drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Please kneel. Please rise. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, mother of the younger James and of Joseph and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself waiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate, and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he heard of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated. And thank you. <coughs> the scriptures we just heard were written down to be spoken aloud just as we heard them today for centuries 
For almost 2,000 years, people gathered just like us and heard these words spoken. In these words, they heard their own story. They were there with the procession of palms as, as Jesus was hailed as the Anointed One, as the Messiah, as the one who was going to save the people from their slavery to the Romans, is what they felt. They heard their own story as the disciples went through the streets of Jerusalem and thought, yeah, right, this guy is going to give us a room just because we asked and said the master needs it? Yeah, right. That was their story as they wondered about that upper room. It was they who gathered with Jesus. It was they who asked the question, am I going to, am I going to deny you? Am I going to be the traitor? Am I going to be the one, Lord? Is it I? It's our story that we step into as we hear these words. The words are written to pull us in. They were written to be heard. Take some time this week to pull out your own Bible and maybe read out loud to yourself the passion of St. Mark, the passion of St. Matthew, the passion of St. Luke, the passion of St. John. Each one a little different, each one with a slightly different perspective based on the people that, that were writing this gospel and what they needed to hear. And hear your story, this most holy of all weeks. This is Holy Week. This is the week in which we, the church, are at our best as we gather together to celebrate the wondrous presence of Jesus in our midst, the Savior, the one who pulls us out of our own slavery to sin, our own narrowness of vision. He calls us to celebrate these events in our lives. On Holy Thursday, he invites us to a supper. He invites us to join with him and the disciples and share the Paschal meal that his ancestors had shared for generations. But he puts a new twist to it. He makes it a meal of service of one another. The bread, the wine, become not just that lamb that was slaughtered in Egypt, that allowed the people to race ahead of Pharaoh's armies through the Red Sea and to the Promised Land. It wasn't just that sacrifice, but he gave it to us as his sacrifice to us. A meal shared so often with his disciples that they could recognize him in their sleep, in the breaking of the bread. Whether it was on hillsides or on roadsides or in people's homes or in that upper room when he took the bread and said the blessing, they knew it was him. When they broke it and gave it to him, they knew it was him. When he shared the cup, they knew it was him. Even centuries later, we are pulled into the story. And how St. John tells us that in the midst of that meal, St. John doesn't mention water, he doesn't mention bread, he doesn't mention grapes, he doesn't mention wine, he doesn't mention the Passover, except in the sense that Jesus knelt down before the disciples and washed their feet. Took the role of a slave like our first reading today, and said to them, you know, people will be looking to you for leadership, but the way you must lead is by serving 
one another. Remember what they said, those outsiders looking in, see how these Christians love one another, take care of one another, share with one another. On Good Friday, we gather literally in the shadow of the cross. We celebrate not just the suffering of Jesus Christ, we celebrate and are drawn into his story as we stand with Mary at the foot of the cross, as we with John are told that she is our mother. We are the ones responsible for her. We stand with Joseph of Arimathea, who who, who takes Jesus down from the cross and carries him and places him in his own tomb, one that he had carved out of solid stone. We gather on Good Friday and wonder if it's the end of the world. We are the story. We are the story. These are important days for us, the church. This is how we came to be, and this is who we are. And the the cross became not just the suffering of Jesus Christ, the cross became the glory. And so we mark ourselves with pride, not just the suffering of the cross, but the glory of the cross. And we remind ourselves that our own suffering is suffering with Christ and can be to help others. Then on Holy Saturday night, reminding ourselves of the darkness of the loss of Christ, the darkness of our own sinfulness, our own confusion, our own loneliness, we will gather out there and light a huge bonfire. That new fire will be used to light this Paschal candle. This Paschal candle marked with this year, 2012, a candle from which we will each light our own, and we will fill this church with light of hope, of faith, of belief in the resurrection. This candle is a symbol of Christ rising from the dead. Who saw it happen? None, but we found an empty tomb, and we found truly the light of Christ. We celebrate then with this candle the beginning of all life through baptism, and we bless the baptismal waters, and we will baptize this holy Saturday night several members of our community who want to become one with us, and they will receive communion and confirmation as well. We celebrate with them the beginning of a whole new life for them, and we celebrate with this candle burning brightly up here at every funeral, the new life of heaven to which we are all invited. We celebrate these days with all kinds of symbols, but the symbols aren't what is important. It is the fact that we gather together in a community, just like those apostles in the past, but we gather with our own sense of confusion. We gather in our own sense of loss, for whatever. Our own sense of diminishment if we have lost a job or lost our health or or just have grown a little bit older and can feel it in our own bodies. Those times when we have been lost and can't find our folks in this big store. We, we kind of gather together in that and we celebrate with song that God is the one that brings us together through Jesus Christ. The words and celebration of each night are God's invitation to you to take your story seriously. These aren't just long services. These are our history, personal, communal, that has spanned the ages from from the beginning of time until now. On Holy Saturday night, usually we read nine readings, but because we're Americans and we can't take the time, we're just doing three or four. 
but they span from the first days of creation to the coming of Jesus Christ, to his invitation to have us follow him. These are important days. Take the time to come and celebrate with us. And, and read the scriptures and come prepared because we are living our story in this ritual way and we share it with others by the way it changes our lives. This is Holy Week, the holiest week of the year for us Christians. This is an invitation to you this Palm Sunday to immerse yourself in the passion and death and resurrection of Christ. Join us on Holy Thursday. Join us at the cross on Good Friday. Join us in the darkness of Holy Saturday night and celebrate our faith. Please rise. All during Lent, we've been using the Apostles' Creed. This is based on some of the first writings we have from the Apostles. It appears to have been some of the first teachings that they used at the resurrection of Christ. The Nicene Creed comes from later, but this is the oldest creed that we have in such a form. And so we gather with all those who have gone before us, and we declare... I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father mighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we enter into this Holy Week, let us pray for the Church for the world and for ourselves, confident that God hears our prayers. that the successors of the apostles, obedient to the call of Jesus, carry his cross humbly in the world, that national and local leaders stand up for the rights of prisoners, especially those who are unjustly accused, that the places where Christ walked and suffered, Jerusalem and the entire Holy Land, be filled with his peace. For our group of five adults and seven high school students who are serving as missionaries to our, to our Santa Rosa, Rosa Sister Parish this week, that on this Palm Sunday, they process through the community of Rosita. United with our brothers and sisters in Christ, we pray. That those near death embrace the cross of Jesus and rise again to see God's face in glory. That the members of this assembly and all our liturgical ministers celebrate this Holy Week with renewed faith. For all who have died, especially for David E. Lang, Lillian No, Paul Nush, and Judith Schmitz, who died this past week, and for those remembered at this Mass, living and deceased, 
of the Gilberto Mendez family. For all our personal petitions, we pray. God, you put us to the test for your namesake. Deepen our faith and grant the prayers we offer in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen.
to think that these gifts that we bring forward have memories attached to them. You know that bag lunch sandwich that you eat on the fly at work, and how you've waited kind of toward the end of morning and finally take that first bite and it just hits the spot. That's the gift that we bring forward. You know that meal that you have shared with a family and you look up and down the table and you say, yeah. That's what we bring forward. As we, uh, as I have done many times, fixed a meal and eaten it over the kitchen sink because we're all alone. And you look out that window and you see the beauty of the world around you. That's what we celebrate here. May these gifts, brothers and sisters, be for us a sign of God's greatness to us. Pray then, sisters and brothers all, that these gifts may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please. Amen. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once and for all, may we feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, that nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us back to hope for what we believe in the resurrection. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, though innocent, Jesus, our Lord, suffered willingly for sinners. He accepted the unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has pur purchased our justification. And so with all the apostles, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. are holy indeed, O Lord, you are the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, eat of it, this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice set aside as a chalice of blessing. 
once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, drink from it. This is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Benedict, our Pope, Jerome, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. invited in this, into this holiest of weeks, and at the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily our bread, bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. And as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, it's my own peace that I share with you. Look not upon our sinfulness, Lord, as we stand here before you, but look upon the faith of your church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. We share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we, those invited to share in the everlasting banquet of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, as we step into this holiest of weeks, we beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call us to be, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in all that you do and all that you say, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration here is ended. Let us go forth to share this mystery with all whom we meet. Thanks be to God. No closing hymn.